The Lord be with you. Well, sometimes when the pitcher has a 3-0 count, the batter expects a fastball. And you've read your bulletin and you expect a reading from Luke. But I'm going to throw you a curve in the dirt. Because we're actually in Hebrews chapter 13. And so I invite you to turn there in your copy of, the, of God's Word. Hebrews chapter 13. We'll be reading verses 1 through 8 and then verses 15 through 16. And I'm going to throw you another curve in the dirt once you get there. I want you to look around and find a, a, a little space on a sheet of paper somewhere. If you're real brave, maybe in the margins of your Bible. Find a pen, a pencil. Don't worry, there's some to go around. We got time. I think we are. Clark came down early so we could do this. They didn't know it. But. Find just a little space on the. And here's what I want you to do I want you to make a list. Just go ahead, just one. I don't care how long your list is. It can be two, it can be 10, it can be 20. Just don't let it take too long. Make yourself a list. And not a grocery list. Not a, a list of, well, Struts, Jeffersons, Safinas, Baja. Baja would be at the top of mind, probably. Uh, but don't, don't make that kind of list. Here's what I want you to put on that list. Right now, what's the most important thing to you? Put that on the list. And then just, what's the next most important? Just spend a few minutes doing that. And then just put that list in the back of your Bible when you get there. Go ahead. Don't look at me. You look at down and write your list. And as you finish your list, listen to Hebrews chapter 13, <clears throat> beginning with verse 1. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers. For by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison, as though you were in prison with them. Those who are being tortured, as though you yourselves were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled. For God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money, and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him then let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have. For such sacrifices are pleasing to God. May God bless the reading and hearing of Holy Scripture. Would you pray with me? <coughs> Holy God, be with us now that we may hear your word while mine are quickly forgotten. That we may hear your words calling us to do what you would have for us to do. That we may be the people you call us to be. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. So yeah, lists. I find lists can be helpful things. Especially if you're going to do something like grocery shop. It's helpful. You're sitting down at the kitchen table on Saturday morning, got the back of an envelope, maybe, maybe you're a little more organized than that. You've got a legal pad, and there you are. Number one, milk, eggs, bread. Or if you're like me, Pop-Tarts, <laughs> corn dogs. I put that on the list, by the way. We don't have it in the house. I'm just, Sally's not here, so if you want to take it up with it later on, you know. Um, but lists can be helpful. They can sort of help to organize our life. But then again, sometimes lists... Lists can be those things that wag their finger at you. I have a list. I have an app on my phone. Where I keep a lot of my lists. There's one that's in, it's in, let's call it Devil Red. It's the list. There are little check boxes by that list. October 15th, 1,500-word book review due. January, 
PhD proposal rough draft due. Later on in January, 5,000 word hermeneutics paper due. It stares at me. Little check boxes, just sort of wagging their finger. Uh huh, what you gonna do? Here it is. There's another one, it's in more of a holy sky blue. It says other things like call so and so, go by and visit so and so, check in again on so and so. Sometimes lists are good, and sometimes, sometimes they sort of hold us accountable. That list may stay there for a long time, like a sticky note on our desk, the phone number scratched on it, we forgot who it was. Who is that? And you call them up, when they answer, you hang up, because then you remember who it was. But lists can do that to us. You know, as a preacher, I don't like lists. Lists don't preach well. I mean, the Ten Commandments, it's good to break them down and preach one at a time. But as a list, it's hard to preach. And don't get me started on the begots. I, have you heard a sermon on the begots? I've heard one or two, and they were good, but that's all I've heard is one or two. Don't get me started on lists. Lists don't do good rhetorically. Everything I've ever heard about in terms of rhetoric and, and public speaking and everything, you always save the good stuff for the end. But that's not what we do with the list, is it? We put the good stuff at the top. Number one, that's what's good. Not number ten. Nobody wants to be said, you're my number ten. No, you're my number one. Lists don't do well rhetorically. I mean, even the Beatitudes, we, it's good to take them one at a time. But to try to look at them all at once, it just uh, it jumbles. And blessed or somebody. Lists, as a preacher, I just don't like lists. And so I, I scratch my head about... Hebrews 13. Because I don't know if you know this or not, Hebrews is a sermon. It's a sermon. It's a preacher preaching to a congregation that's sort of fraying at the edges and threatening to split on all the little stress fracture cracks. Now what are they going to split over? What, or has somebody come in and said, I think Jesus was a pickle? No. Are they splitting over what time to have Sunday school? No. Did they argue about what color the carpet should be in the synagogue? No. Do you know what it is? Jesus hadn't come back yet. He said he was going to come back. And all these, these sort of little churches in the first century, that's what happened. There was such urgency flung on them that when they started burying more people and marking off more days on the calendar and Jesus hadn't shown up, well, maybe this whole thing just ain't worth it. Maybe it's not real. And so all throughout the first 12 chapters of Hebrews, the preacher keeps pointing back, there's Jesus. Remember Jesus? You want a sacrifice? There's Jesus. You want a high priest? There's Jesus. You want a perfect example of somebody in Scripture who's the best of the best? There's Jesus. Oh man, the first 12 chapters are great. In fact, 13 is so different that some scholars go, well, that might not be the same person. That might not be the same person writing. I don't know. It's here. In the Bible, you got to deal with it, but it's a list. What does he put at the top of the list? Let mutual love continue. Now, this isn't the same thing as that sort of uh, repetitive rhythm, that beat you hear throughout Scripture. Love God and your neighbor as yourself. It's a part of it. But remember, this church is, Jesus isn't coming back. I guess we, guess we all better just pack up our stuff and go home. The preacher says, no, no, the important thing, what holds it together, mutual love. You see, you can disagree on a whole lot of stuff. Baptists are pretty good at that. You can disagree on a lot of things, but you can still sit in the same pew with somebody. Let mutual love continue, he says. You notice that's at the top of the list. Not, not, uh, in, in let inerrancy of the word of God be the primary and chief concern of all of God's people. That's not at the top of the list. It's not the, the divinity and the arguing over the nature of God's relationship with Jesus. That's not at the top of the list. What's at the top of the list? Let mutual love continue. Love each other. Oh, yeah, you're going to argue. Yeah, it's going to be different. Some of you are going to want purple carpet. Some of you are going to want hardwood. Some of you are going to want the King James. Some of you are going to want the NRSV. Some of you want hymns. Some of you want praise songs. Some of you want a screen. Some of you want books. Some of you want 10 o'clock. Some of you want 11 o'clock. But the thing at the end of the day, all that matters, let mutual love continue. That's what will keep on going. That's what will bring a church all the way through any kind 
or change or transition or difficulty. It's at the top of the list. But you know there's a danger in it. A church can be so in love with itself, it won't crack the door to let the wind in. You know it? A church can be so in love with itself that it'll paint the windows black, not to look outside. And so what's two on the list? What gets the silver medal on the preacher's list? Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers. I love that. And then he goes on to say, for by doing so, some have entertained angels without knowing it. It's a clear reference back to to Abraham and Sarah. They're in the book of Genesis by the Oaks of Mambry. Abraham, Sarah, just hanging out in their tent, bothering nobody. Three strangers show up, knock on the flap. I guess you can knock on the flap. I don't know how you do it. There they are, three strangers. Abraham says, baby, put on the cakes. We got visitors. So Sarah makes makes up some cakes. They sit down with the three, three strangers. And all of them, the text say, all of them in unison, talk to Abraham and say, yeah, she's going to have a baby. And Sarah hears him in the kitchen. What she do? She laughs. laughs. I'm on 90 years old. Have a baby. Good grief. Even in the midst of that, the strangers bless them and leave. There's an icon in my office, a picture, orthodox icon, of the three strangers, and they come to visit. But it's not about the three strangers. It's the Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There with Abraham and Sarah. Some have entertained angels, the writer of Hebrews say, but you know what I think he means? I think he means what Jesus meant in Matthew 25. For whatever you do to the least of these, you've done to me. Some have entertained strangers and entertained God, God's self. Some churches won't crack open the door, but he says, remember, Open the door. Welcome the stranger. For it might be God. It's on the list. Number two. Remember those who are in prison. Now that's easy to do. Right? Wednesday night, we're cleaning up. We've eaten our fried chicken and coleslaw and all that stuff. We're moving the tables, throwing away everything, getting together. Deacon of the week stands up. Do we have any prayer concerns? Yeah, I drove by the jail. We need to remember those folks in prison. We need to remember them. Oh, all right, and we add them to the list. Maybe even sitting in our house. Oh, let's remember those in prison. Oh, but wait. As though you were in prison with them. I remember I hadn't been here too long. Not here, but back in Alabama. Oh, a woman came to me and she said, Preacher, my grandson is down at the county jail. I'd like for you to go see him. Maybe, Maybe I was just young, thinking, oh, that's what you're supposed to do. Maybe I'm stupid. I don't know. I'm kind of stupid. I got in the car and I drove down to the jail. I knew the chaplain. I'd already talked to him. Said, I have a visitor, a person I need to visit down at the jail. Pulled up, walked in. And, and, you know, the whole time down there, I was thinking like what I had seen on, like, Law and Order, right? That I'd be into this nice room, maybe a coffee pot in the back with some styrofoam cups. There'd be a, 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 a sort of a counter with a glass, little phone hanging on the wall. They'd walk somebody in in an orange jumpsuit, tattoo of a teardrop on his face maybe. And he'd either cuss me for being a preacher or I'd have him sobbing and wanting to accept Jesus and get baptized tomorrow. That's what I thought. So I walked in. There was the chaplain. Oh, no, come this way. Through the door. Came open. Walked in. Wham! Slammed behind me. Through another door. Down the hall. And he said, we're going to go to my office. Now, I don't know what I expected. Maybe wood paneling and handsome furniture, leather-bound books, I don't know. What I got was a converted cell, carpet halfway up the wall, stacks of moldy books that some church had donated, some New Testaments probably locked away in the attic, legal pads, and I remember noticing ballpoint pens. It had been in the paper that week that one of the inmates had stabbed another one with a ballpoint pen. There was a box of them chaplain said, oh, I don't worry, I'll go get the inmate and bring him down here. But there's a box of pins. <laughs> a few minutes later, he comes in, sits him down right in front of me in a folding chair and says, I'll be back in half an hour. Walks out and shuts the door. Here I am face to face with this guy. This guy I thought, you know, I didn't know why he was in there, but I knew there was a box of pins right there. 
We got to talk, and you know what? Do you know what his name was? It's Chris. He had a sister three years old, younger than him. I have a sister three years younger than me. Do you know what her name is? Stephanie. Do you know what his sister's name was? Stephanie. We sat there and talked. He lived with his grandma, loved his grandma, said she raised him. Y'all know my grandma. Sitting there across from him, talking. Hands in those cuffs, jumpsuit three, three sizes too big, and white dirty socks and orange sandals a dozen people probably wore before he did. He told me, I'm in here, bounced too many checks. A friend of mine was in a bind, went broke into the house, stole a stereo. Could have been different. Could have been different. He sobbed when he asked me about his son, Jimmy, and his daughter, Lindsay. We prayed, and I looked out the window. Can you hurry up? There's still these pins in here. Chaplain came and locked the door, walked him down the hall. And I remember he turned around and said, thank you, Chris. Could have been me. Could have been me walking down the hall. Remember those who were in prison as though you were in prison with them. I hadn't forgot them. I remember them. Those who were being tortured. Now, friends, I'm gonna tell, I don't know anybody being tortured. I'm just going to put it out there. I know people who serve all over the world, and none of them are, stri- are tied to poles and hit with whips. I don't know any of them. I know there are people who are, but I don't know them. I don't know one, anyone in this country or in any other country, personally, who are being tortured. I don't know anybody waterboarded for their faith. Nobody. Don't know a single soul. But, you know, I do know people who are tortured by those little orange bottles with the pills in them. Their backs hurt, they're bent over, their feet ache. And they know just one of those pills would make it go away, but they can't stop at one. they got to have more. Oh, that pill will make the pain go away. It'll make all kinds of pain go away. They're tortured. I know people like that. I know people who are tortured. Because when they wake up in the morning, they went to bed praying they'd wake up to be somebody different. Somebody that the world would accept. Somebody that the world would like. And they woke up and guess what? They're the same person. And they're tortured. Because every day, people that meet in buildings with crosses on top of them tell them they're going to die and go to hell for the person they are. They're tortured. Every single day. I know those people. Remember those who are being tortured as though you yourselves were being tortured. Now, verse 4, that sounds more biblical. That's, what, that's on the list, by the way. Torture. But verse 4, that sounds more. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled, for God will judge fornicators and sinners. We put that on a poster. We put that on a stick and march up and down the city block. Let everybody know it's in there. It's in the book. I see people who do that. They don't want you to see their internet search history. I see people who do that. They don't want you to ask about that person on the side. I know people who do that. Don't ask them about how they treat their wives. Don't ask them about their relationship with their family. That's one of them verses. It ain't for me. It's for them. But it's on the list. It's on the list. Keep your lives free from the love of money. There he goes again. That preacher talking about money. But that's it. I mean, it's on the list. Keep your lives free from the love of money. Be content with what you have. You know, when when I first answered the call to ministry, I remember my pastor, Brother Jerry, said, well, what you need to do is, is at the end of the service, come on down and let everybody know. And so, you know, we played, you know, what is it, 12 stands of the Just As I Am or something like that. I came down to the front. Brother Jerry pulled his lapel mic out of his shirt, handed it to me, said, tell everybody, tell everybody what you just said. I said, oh, we'll call to go to ministry. <laughs> oh, praise God. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. We've been praying for you, Chris. Stood at the back door with him. Everybody came out. We're so happy. We're so happy. Except for one, James Gray. Maybe James won't see this, but if he does, he knows I'm telling the truth. James is cut from the same kind of cloth that my folks are. 
James is one of the best paint and body men I've ever known. He can uh, sand one smooth and paint it to where you could brush your hair in it. But James was only born one and a half arms. He had two sons, Tyler, who was a year younger than me, Luke. We called him Luther for some reason. He was younger, much younger, but we all grew up sort of catching frogs together. James came to the back of the church, shook my hand, and he said, you ain't going to make any money. You're not going to make any money. I said, well, James, you know, money is not all it's about. He goes, no, but it sure helps. And I knew what he meant. He was really concerned. He knew. Now, folks, I ain't driving a jet, but I'm doing it. That's what he said. Does he love money? No. Is he worried about it? I wonder where it's at on his list. But here it is, on the preacher's list. Be content with what you have. That's hard to do. Every time the commercial comes on, there's Matthew McConaughey in that Lincoln again. I don't know if I'm supposed to be him or want the car. Don't ask Sally which one. I won't buy anything built by Ford, and I don't go, all right, all right, all right. I'm not one of them. <laughs> every time, every time we think we're content, there's something else. There it is. Be content with what you have. Oh, but, you know, it sure is a lot easier to clean up Cole's milk off of leather seats in a nicer truck. You know, I'd probably get better gas mileage in a newer truck. Think about that every time I get in, turn the key. Crank's fine. I can drive from here to Mexico and back. Done it a few times. Be content with what you have. I will never leave you or forsake you, he says. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? You know, it doesn't matter how much of it you have. Money just staves off the inevitable. It does. It doesn't protect you. It doesn't keep you. It doesn't, doesn't provide for you. Only one thing does. God. It's on the list. Remember your leaders. <laughs> he didn't have Congress. Right? He didn't have, he didn't have those people. He didn't have two news channels telling him this half of the politicians are messed up and this half are messed up. He didn't have that. He kind of did. Rome and its Senate would go back and forth. The leaders of the church would go back and forth. Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. But yeah, but you, he, didn't have, he didn't have folks preaching sermons about, if I want to trust God for a $65 million jet, I'm going to trust God for a 60. He didn't have that. He didn't have people like, like old you know, Jim Baker selling five-gallon buckets of potato soup for the end of the world. That's a real thing, by the way. Do you know that? It's crazy. You can buy end-of-the-world potato soup. I'm not selling it, but if you want to buy it, I might sell it to you. But it's real. But it's on the list. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Their faith. And then he says, the words on that list that are, are stitched on needlepoint, put on our throw pillows, hung on, on the walls in our living room. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's good. That's a good way to wrap up the list. That's good. Through him, he says in verse 15, then let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God. That is, the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. When you make your list, he says, that should be at the top. I wonder, I wonder what's at the top of your lists. I wonder what you wrote down first. It's on the list. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, giver of all good things, including our Holy Spirit. Lord, as we look over the list we make, the lists we have written down even this morning, the list written on our hearts, that I pray that at the top will always be you. 
that no matter whatever may become priority in our life, whatever may seem to take away our energy and our focus, at the top of the list is always Jesus Christ. The same yesterday, today, and forever. While the rest of our list may be scratched out in pen, the top place is chiseled in stone for you. So God, help us throughout our days as we make lists to control and govern our lives, Lord, that we always, always put you at the top. And if we haven't, that Lord, this morning we will. And we will put you first in all that we are, in all that we have, in all that we do. In Christ's name we pray.